All right, so the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is cache out the simulation. And before you do that, make sure you have add ID attribute turned on because we need the ID attribute for deleting the particles. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is just to help visualize the particles, I'm gonna drop down a particle fluid surface node. And I'm going to switch it from surface polygons to particles. And I'm also gonna turn on visualize velocity just to help see it a little bit better. There we go. And we're trying to make this loopable, right? So we want to start the simulation at an area, or rather, we want to start the loop at an area that already has motion. So I'm going to start mine at frame 46, but you can choose whatever works best for you. And we're going to do that with a retime node. So I'm going to wire this in. And where it says evaluation mode, I'm going to switch that to shift range. And that way, it'll shift the range that we have to frame one. And so we're using frame 46 to 175. And so that means uh, frame one, it'll already be shifted to frame 46. And if we play this, it should go towards or to frame 130. And yeah, we can see that's working perfectly. And so now the next step is we need to delete particles in order to make it loopable. And so we can do that with a group expression node. So let's go ahead and place this. And make sure to set the group type to points because that's what we're dealing with. I'm just going to give this uh, a name really quick. And remember earlier I said we're deleting by ID. And so if we drop down right here, we can say there's a preset right here that says 30% chance. And so we're going to replace element number with ID. And actually, let me just make sure I grab the right selection. And we're going to type in at ID. So we're going to create a slider and we can do that with ch and I'm just going to give it a name uh, threshold and I'm going to click this button right here and it'll give us a slider and if I move this you can see that it starts selecting points and I think I'm going to delete frames or rather I'm going to delete points over the course of 20 frames so I'm going to go to frame 1 and I want all of the particles to be deleted. So I'm going to set the threshold to one and just set a keyframe. And then I'm going to go to frame 20 and I'm going to set it to zero. And that should have all of the particles go from 100% selected to 0%. All right, perfect. And so now I'm going to go to the last frame, which is 130. And again, we want all of the particles to be deleted. So I'm going to put the threshold back up to one and I'm going to go 20 frames before 130, which should be frame 110. And I'm going to set this back to zero. All right, perfect. So now let's type in blast so we can get a blast node going on. And I'm going to wire that in. And let's set it to the group that we just created. And so now if we play it, the particle should come in and then they should get deleted. All right, that's working perfectly. So now it's time to do the loop part. So we're going to type in a time shift and we're going to put that in and wire it up and then a merge node and we're going to merge these two together now I'm going to put the, the, the display flag here alright so now we need to time shift the second cache that we're merging and we need to offset exactly half of the total length of the cache and the cache is 130 frames long so if we click on this frame button we can see the expression which is dollar sign $F and so we're going to do plus, and then we're going to do parentheses, and I'm going to type in 130 divided by 2. And then I'm going to hit enter. Perfect. And so now we can see that if we, if we select this one and then put the playhead on the previous one, we can see that they're playing at different times. All right, perfect. So now we're going to put the display head or the display flag on the merge node. And in order for it to be loopable, we're going to be playing half of the length of the cache and we know that it's 130 frames long and 130 divided by 2 is 65 so that means frame 66 and frame 1 should be the same if this is truly loopable so I'm going to put the playhead at 66 and now I'm going to go to frame 1 and we can see that those two frames are exactly the same and so that means if, I'm, if I put this uh, where is it right here this is the length that the frames are going to play so if I set this to 65 and then I hit play by the time it loops back around, it should be seamless. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play blast this and I'll be back in just a moment. All right, that play blast is finished now, so let's take a look at it. 
yep, seems to be looping perfectly. As soon as it goes back to frame one, it's seamless. All right, well, thank you for watching. I really hope this tutorial helped you out. Thank you.